and as the next speaker, Davide Moscatelli, he's dos he is a doctor in chemical engineering, and since 2018, he is full professor of applied physical chemistry in the chemical engineering department at the Politecnico di Milano. He spent 15 years at the ATH in Zurich, and starting from 2019, he collaborates continuously with Organic Chemia, where he's leading the fundamental laboratory and some innovation initiatives, particularly in the field of sustainability. Please, Davide, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So uh, the title of my talk is Sustainability in Organic Chemia. Uh, the presentation has been prepared together with Jansu. And uh, you know already what Organic Chemia is, is doing in our project. And in action in the field of um, hot melt polymers. But my presentation today is going to present under different point of view, what we are doing in organic chemia regarding sustainability. So uh, I'll skip very fast the first uh, slides regarding why renewable, you know, much better than me. Uh, this is the Hubbard peak of oil. Uh, there was, you know, some uh, crisis in, in, in the 70s regarding, you know, the shortage in oil. But then, you know, because of technology, uh, the availability of, of oil uh, was increased. And, uh, and so, you know, why nowadays we are looking for something renewable? Well, you know, because of pollution. So we are producing a lot of CO2 by using fossil fuel uh, and fossil materials. And so that's why uh, right in, 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 in producing uh, more sustainable and, and bio-based product. Now, uh, if you look at a bit more in detail, What, what we are using polymers in emulsion and uh, for different fields, you know, coatings, uh, pressure sensitive adhesive, polymers for construction, uh, polymer for textile and leather, and, you know, polymer for some special application, like, for example, the Otmel one. I mean, the oil is consumed mainly for, for transportations and, and petrochemicals. If you look at the petrochemicals, uh, you know, 4% of the oil, of, of the petrochemicals used, uh, goes into plastic. So now if you look at uh, the type of plastic which are produced in the world, in particular the one for packaging, which are quite interesting for our, uh, for our project, you see that the polyolefin used in the world, you know, with polypropylene, low and high density polyethylene, and you know those guys are, are covering more the half of the whole poly group. What we are doing in organic chemia, we are synthesizing, as I already told you, latexes, which are acrylics, styrene, or you know vinyl acetate-based polymer. The market is around you know 10 million tons, and uh, uh, our latexes are covering more, more or less three percent of the whole plastic material produced. This means that the total consumption of oil that goes into the product that we are dealing with is only 0.12%. So now, while we are now spending a lot of efforts in sustainability, because even if uh, we are touching a very tiny amount of uh, fossil fuel consumption, in any case, I mean, we need to you know, do our, our step uh, Forward for for increase the quality of of our world. And now we listen to so many interesting oxyalkanoids, which are wonderful, you know, bio-based polymer produced by you know bacteria. Uh, there is a special problem for us, except the hot melt, which you already know very well. And the problem is that you know our in our company we are using different technology for synthesizing polymer. Most of them are based on emulsion free radical polymerization. So, I mean, following this process, we have water as a solvent. We have droplet of monomer, which usually are lipophilic. Uh, in general, we are using a mixture of many monomer, but most of them are lipophilic, so they are not soluble in water. The initiation of the polymerization is started in water. It, it creates uh, chains in water that very quickly jump into micelles, and we are using 
surfactant to do that one. And then, I mean, during the time of conversion of the monomer, we are creating, you know, more than 90% of our production is based on latexes, which are nothing but nanoparticles of polymer in the size of hundreds of nanometers in water stabilized with surfactants or charges coming from specific monomer like, you know, acrylic acid or metacrylic acid. So now the biggest issue we are facing in jumping into a sustainability is that our materials are nanoparticle dissolved in water. There are a lot of possibility to get nanoparticle, like for example, solvent evaporation, salting out, but there is no one single process which is really green. So in order to you know, jump into a more sustainable production in the company, we have to face huge problems. So now what we are doing uh, for, for uh, increase the quality of our products, uh, but well, we are working on uh, four different subjects at the end of the presentation. So we are working on bio-based products. So using material which are coming from biological resources, more or less like the PHA we just saw uh, in, in the last presentation, but uh, we always need to have some material which can be polymerized in water following the so-called emulsion free radical polymerization. Then we are focusing ourselves in producing biodegradable polymer and also biocompostable. So you know very well that in general, acrylics, styrene acrylics, or vinylic polymer, they are not degradable. So we are now working in order to turn our material more sustainable in order to have a certain percentages of our material biodegradable and also biocompostable, which are the benefit in having during the decomposition of material, uh, the production of some, you know, available nutrients for the soil. Finally, we are working uh, with a new concept of biomass balance, which I'm going to present you briefly uh, at the end of the presentation, and also in recycling uh, plastic material. So now regarding bio-based, since we are working in, in emulsion free radical polymerization, the only available sources of bio-based acrylics are sketched in this, in this slide. There are some other products now available on the market, but just in very few amounts. So not uh, you know, available for large scale production like the one in our company. And we are working on very, very lipophilic acrylate or lauryl acrylate, which are coming partially from bioresources because unfortunately the acrylic or metacrylic moieties by by fermentation there are just some you know small companies in us which are trying now to produce uh, acrylic and metacrylic acid it's not difficult at all the problem is that the cost is five times the acrylic or metacrylic acid coming from oil so nowadays there are not real product on the market so the only bio-based sources are the alcohols so the long chain which are attached to uh, the acrylic and metacrylic moieties, which are coming from, from, from oils, natural oils. Then there is ethyl acrylate and octyl acrylate, which are coming from fermentation. In particular, ethyl acrylate has the ethyl moieties, which is coming from, from, from natural sources of fermentation. So just this part of the molecule, half of the carbon are coming from from bioresources. And then uh, the only hydrophilic monomer that we can use in our chemistry to jump into the bio-based world is itaconic acid that you see here. So of course, which are the problems? The problems are that itaconic acid is much more difficult to be polymerized than acrylic acid, while the lipophilic one, they are extremely, extremely lipophilic. So it's quite difficult now to incorporate in the common chemistry, which has been used in the last 70 years inside you know, the recipes. So we are now putting a lot of effort in order to increase the quantity of this monomer inside of our recipes. Uh, actually, we can reach up to 40% of bio-based 
monomer in, in our recipes, bio-based carbon. Uh, and so, I mean, we are slightly turning the product 100% photo based now into partially bio-based. I say partially just because now the market has not enough monomer to be used to fulfill. Regarding biodegradable polymer, there is a plethora you know, of possible polymers. And I'm just mentioning now you know, polysaccharides, which are quite interesting for our, for our um, projects, biodegradable polymers like PLA, like PHA, uh, but all of those ones are bulky polymers. So they are produced in bulk and not into dispersion in water. So what we set up in the last year is a quite nice process from which we are starting from some biocompatible, you know, hydroxyethyl metacrylate, and then we are running uh, via the usage of lactide, which is, you know, the starting monomer of polylactic acid. So we are attaching lactide to the OH group coming from, you know, HEMA, for example, or HPMA, or, you know, other three or four, you know, suitable acrylics which are presenting an OH group in their structure. And then we are creating macro monomers. You see here in the picture, we are keep maintaining you know, the double bond in order to turn this polymerization. And those are attached with some you know, branches of PLA. And I mean, this macro monomer can be then polymerized through free radical polymerization, giving a kind of comb-like polymers, which have branches which are biodegradable. So of course, even in this case, the backbone is not uh, fully degradable. So it takes time because it's, it's hydrophilic. Those are you know, monomers, for example, used for contact lenses. And with those chemistry, we can incorporate partially degradable you know, PLA chains inside of our structures. For biocompostable, uh, you know, I don't want to jump into details, but for, for biocompostability, we need to have, you know, de degradation of the polymer, biodegradation of the polymer, uh, disintegrability of the polymer, absence of, you know, heavy metals, and uh, everything should appear in, in a fixed amount of times. Six months. Excuse me, Davide, in you have five minutes yeah. left. Yeah, sure. Uh, and in our chemistry, we are now working in uh, the same that I showed before, you know, attaching polylactic acid to acrylics. We are jumping into increasing the amount of, you know, degradable points in our structure. We are playing with, you know, polylactic acid, but also caprolactone, which is not biobased, but biodegradable, and glycolide, which is coming from glycolic acid, which is, again, biobased and degradable. The uh, the last point before jumping a uh, couple of minutes on recyclability, we are now working with a very fancy uh, new subject, which is biomass balance approach. Uh, this uh, subject has been driven by the need to reduce the greenhouse gas emission from fossil fuels. And since in our market, uh, very few numbers of bio-based uh, monomer, uh, what big companies are doing in collaboration with you know, a company like, like Organic Chemia is to change the process in which they are producing goods, like monomer in our case, by using different uh, natural resources. So in very few words, they are not touching the chemistry of the monomer. So the monomer are still coming from oil, but they are changing the processes to then turn oil into those goods in using, for example, a biogas or you know, uh, electricity, not from fossil fuels. And so, for example, in a very big monomer we are using, like butyl acrylate, they can save 2.4 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of butyl acrylate by differentiating the processes of production of those goods. We are now using uh, the, the monomer, which cannot be replaced with the bio base, but we are now using those kind of monomer, which has this biomass balance approach, which helps in decreasing the consumption uh, of uh, fossil resources and, and then decreasing the production of CO2. 
A very last point that I would like to touch with you is a very recent project uh, we put in place for using recycled monomer, in particular methyl metacrylate. In the world, methyl metacrylate is producing more than 4 million uh, metric tons per year. 50% goes into bulky PMMA, like plexiglass, which is nowadays used quite a lot for you know, uh, decreasing the, the transmission of, of COVID. And the second largest application is our, which is in the paints. So there is a, a, a collection of more or less 10% of these goods. And the fancy effect of polymethyl metacrylate, it is that by pyrolysis, it goes down back to methyl metacrylate. So nowadays we are uh, changing our processes in order to use recycled MMA instead of oil-based MMA. This is another good way for, for increase the sustainability because you know after the collection of waste polymethyl metacrylate, through degradation reactions, we are going back to recycled MMA. And now our company is increasing a lot the usage of this recycled MMA in their recipes. So I just touched five different subjects here just to you know, open you know, possible collaboration and interest of the audience here, because we started with the project working in this we are going to be inspired by what we saw in, in all the other presentation. And now we are just touching you know, more deeply this subject. I will leave, thank you for, 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 your, uh, for listening to us. And we leave you know, our contacts in, in case that you know, there will be possibility for you know, further interaction and you know, for other projects to, together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Davide, for your contribution. We are really grateful that you have shared with us the efforts yes. and advances in organic chemia.